everyone, today it's a book tag video and I'm going to do the book scavenger hunt today. A um, little bit of info, not all my books are actually kept on the shelf behind me, that would be absurd because the sheer quantity of books I've got, I can't actually get them in one bookcase. And I share this one with my husband, so, you know, it's first fairs. So I have gone around and collected some of the books ready to answer these questions. They still come off my shelves, they're just not from behind me. Anyway, here we go. Question one is... Find a book with the title or author that has a Z in it. So I've had to go downstairs into the TV tie-in cupboard and I've found The X-Files Ground Zero written by Kevin J. Anderson. I actually had the audio version of this first which was read by Gillian Anderson. I didn't actually watch X-Files at the time. I had no idea who Scully was. So to hear the actress reading it before I saw the actress playing it was kind of kooky in my head but it really worked and I have to say this is one of my favourite X-Files books. Question two, find a classic. I've got Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. I recently read this uh, having read Only Treasure Island when I was a kid. This is set in Scotland just after the, the Jacobite Rising and for as a young lad who's trying to claim his fortune while also staying alive and not being arrested for a traitor. It's a very good book, lots of Scottish terms in it, um, a lot of the characters speak Scots themselves so it's a real good example of the language and the country at that particular time. So a book with a key on the cover of it. Diana Gabaldon's The Scottish Prisoner. Nice bunch of keys there for you. For those that don't know this fits in after the events of Drums of Autumn, somewhere in the middle of Voyager and looks at Jamie's life as a prisoner of the English army. Question four is something that is not a book that is on your bookcase. Sadness? I quite like this. She's a cute little figure. Question five, the oldest book you have in your possession. I'm going to go with The Wind and the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This edition is actually 1973. I picked it up when I was about 10 for 50p off a market stall. Um, I quite like this one. It's uh, battered but still well loved. It's not too big so it fits in your pocket and it's not too garishly modern. A lot of covers I'm seeing of um, old classics of children's books, the covers are so jarring with what's inside the book that I quite like the old-fashioned covers that you can find in charity shops and market stores. So question six is a book with a girl on the cover. So I've got for Anna Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. This is actually the film tie-in cover um, starring Megan Follows. So this is her as a young girl-ish playing Anne. Uh, these are set in Prince Edward Island, uh, turn of the century and follow the exploits of Anne who's an orphan who's taken in by a brother and sister and how she fits in with Green Gables and Avonlea and affects all those around her. Question 7 then is a book with a boy on the cover. Gone for The Inexplicables by Sherry Priest. This is Rector, and those of you who see my review of The Inexplicables, you know about this book. Those of you who haven't seen the review, it's down in the video list somewhere on my channel. So question eight is gonna round off the covers. Book with animals on the cover. So I've gone for The Animals of Farthing Wood by Colin Don. This is the original illustrated cover we got over in the UK. Uh, nowadays you will get the animated TV series cover over here because that was really big at the time. I read this at about the same time that series started. I tell you, this book will make you cry. It's, it's one of those books. Question eight then is a book with only words on the cover. So we've gone from nice pretty pictures and photos to words. And I have to say this is probably one of my most beautiful books with words on the cover. This is Terry Pratchett's The Wit and Wisdom of Discworld. This is a collection of quotes and annotations from the Discworld books across the board uh, which are very funny and very poignant um, with regards to certain aspects of life. Uh, it looks very much like that inside. So question, I don't know, I'll find out in a minute. Um, find a book with a male protagonist. So I've picked up Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. For those of you who are regular viewers, you know I love this series. This book uh, is the first in the Expanse series and it follows Holden 
and Miller. So you have two male protagonists in this story. That doesn't mean to say the female characters are sidelined. They are written really well in here. So you're not missing anything out just because you're getting a male perspective. So question 11, I've added this one in. It's a book with a female protagonist. For this I've picked Cross Stitch by Diana Gabaldon because it's predominantly from Claire's point of view. It's written in first person. This is her viewpoint of the events around her which really makes the reader feel part of her confusion at being thrust into 1743 around all these Scottish guys who are speaking Gaelic to her and she's got no idea what they're saying. So it's a very good throw you in at the deep end and try and figure out what the hell's going on. Question 12, I've run out of fingers so I've stopped doing that, is find a book with illustrations. I've picked up A Red Wall Winter's Tale by Brian Jacks. This is a lovely little hardback that was released as a special one offy and it has illustrations on virtually every single page throughout the story and I think they are beautiful and really capture what Red Wall means to a lot of people. Question 13 is find a book with gold lettering. That's actually quite hard if I don't want to pick a Diana Gabaldon because most of hers have gold writing. So I've rummaged in the cupboard and I found a William Hallward. This is the Walls of Time series, Journey to the Heartlands, which I think is book one. Yep, it's book one. You can see the gold on the spine here. And while I was digging through the cupboard, I also found one that has silver lettering. This is Legends. It's a collection of fantasy short stories. I don't actually think I've read this yet. Question 14 is find a diary. It can be true or fictional. So I had to do quite a bit of hunting for this one because I don't have diaries in the house. It's not something I do as a rule. Although having said that, I have got a diary for myself to keep track of what I need to do for booktube and generally in life. But I'm not counting that one because that's my personal diary. So I've come up with this beauty. This is Time Riders by Alex Scarrow. If you like alternative futures, alternative history, if you like young teenage characters who are very individual and strong world, if you like a bit of zombie, a bit of war, a bit of romance, a bit of history, this is the series for you. I would highly recommend you seek out Time Riders and go and read it. It's probably one of the best young A series I've read ever. Uh, this is book one. And I've counted this one as part of my diary question because there are diary entries in it. One of the main characters, Selena, keeps a diary just so she can keep events straight in her head. But please, go and check this out. This is a very underrated series and I highly recommend it. So question 15 is find a book with a common surname. Who's the author? So I was looking on my shelves and right beside my bed I have two shelves. I actually have four shelves but they're above each other so I count them as two lots of shelves. And on both shelves I found uh, a surname by two different authors and two completely different books. They're not even connected, they're not even in the same genre. So I figured that would answer this common author surname. I've got Before and After, which is written by Matthew Thomas, which if you kind of like The End of the World and Exploding Sheep, that might be up your street. Because That's quite a funny one actually. And um, Leslie Thomas, this is The Last Detective, which is part of the Dangerous Davis series, which, as you can see, starred Peter Davison in the TV adaptation over on ITV quite a few years ago now. So, a very nice, gentle crime series. Quite a bit of comedy in that one as well. The next question, which can you believe I've lost count again? How hard is it to count to 1 to 20, honestly? Um, is find a book with a close-up on it. So I've picked up one of my husband's books. This is Stephen Baxter. It's Mammoth, which as you can see has a nice big close-up of a mammoth, which you probably don't want to meet on a dark and stormy night. Question 17 on my list is the earliest um, time setting for a book on your shelf. So I've gone with Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. Oriel. As the title may suggest, set pretty early, you know, like cavemen times. Um, I don't actually have read this one yet, so I'm sorry I can't tell you much about it, but it's the first in the series and apparently it's a very good series. Next up I have to find a hardcover that does not have a dust jacket. Uh, the BBC Doctor Who series I did very well answering this question. Most of their books were hardcover which did not have dust jackets, so nice and easy. And they also look really nice on the shelf like that. This one is The Way Through the Woods by Una Cormac which is uh, a timey-wimey one, speciality of the 11th Doctor era. Uh, pretty 
weird and unsettling as well. I quite like this one. Next up I need to find a teal or turquoise coloured book. I think this answers it. This is my Sherlock Holmes, Young Sherlock Holmes series. This is Snake Bite and they're written by Andrew Lane. These are following the exploits of Sherlock Holmes in his teenage years. Think the film Young Sherlock Holmes by Steven Spielberg but we don't have Watson at this stage and this is Holmes very much finding his own fate. Uh, I would say these are a lot more serious than the film version of Young Sherlock Holmes is but they're also very much Holmes as people who've read the canon would appreciate and understand. I quite like these. Next up I need a book with stars on the cover. You'd have thought that had been easy with lots of sci-fi books in the house but you'd be amazed how many sci-fi books don't actually have space on their covers. So I've had to go for Stephen Baxter's Space which um, all these tiny little dots are actually stars. This is part of a trilogy of books which I'm aware is really really good but I don't really remember much about them. I kept falling asleep while my husband was reading them to me. Sorry. Maybe check them out though because Stephen Baxter this series particularly is one of his best ones. Question 21 I think on my list is a non-young adult book. Um, do you want to go for a Diana Gabaldon? I've got over here some Lord of the Ring. Let's see. I think... I'll probably go with The Complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Those of you who've never read Sherlock Holmes, you don't know what you're missing. This is crime stories at their very earliest. Okay, Edgar Allan Poe technically did the first earliest crime stories, and I think there's a French chap who did one. But these are the most enduring crime stories. I don't think it's the crimes themselves that are loved so much. It's the relationship between Holmes and Watson that you get tiny little glimpses of um, during the actual adventures. Most of these stories are short stories, so they're really easy to get to. They were originally published in the Strand magazine. Um, there are four stories in the Holmes canon. Study in Scarlet, Sign of Four, Hands of the Baskervilles and The Valley of Fear. Lots of people consider The Valley of Fear the best one and structurally and plot wise it is. I personally like Hound of the Baskervilles because it's a nice gothic horror one. So I'm going to go with Sherlock Holmes. As you might notice my bookcase has just rearranged. That's because I've had to go and dig out two books for the next questions. First up they want to know what your longest book is on your bookcase. For me at the moment that's going to be The Fiery Cross which is part of the Outlander series written by Diana Gabaldon. This stands a whacking 1,412 pages and yes I have read it. It's been known to have the best closing line in a book. It actually got an award for it. Um, you'll see it quoted quite a few times but here it is if you've not seen it. When the day shall come that we do part, he said softly, and turned to look at me. If my last words are not, I love you. You can, it was because I didn't have the time. Very, very sweet. Um, it's a beautiful book, very well written, looking at the start of the American Revolution against Britain. The final question on the book scavenger hunt list is the shortest book. Now this is a little bit of a problem because actually I don't pay attention to how long a short books are. I mean obviously I know how thick a book is but I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how many pages are in it. So I've been a bit sort of literal on this and I've picked the shortest book on my list which would be Douglas Adams's The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. As you can see it's rather a short little beastie compared to quite a lot of my other books. I like this edition. We do actually have a few editions of uh, the restaurant because uh, I had a few and my husband had a few so we had to sort of condense them but we kept this one because it's a nice little one if it's beautifully in your pocket and it's also the only hardcover book we have from the Hitchhiker series. Bearing in mind there are now six books in it. This is the only one we have in hardcover and I really like it. It just it means a lot. So there is my book scavenger hunt questionnaire. I hope that was a bit of fun for you, it was a bit of fun for me and you're probably tired of listening to me now so I'm going to stop there and say if you want me to go and watch your book scavenger hunt please leave me a link below in the comments. If there's any books there you want me to do a talk about please also tell me so I can do that for you at some point or just leave a comment for you and let you know and thank you very much for watching. Bye!